Those viewers who have seen my video on my home electronics lab and recording studio may remember that on the left side of my workbench I have a stack of equipment that uh, includes several power supplies, uh, an analog oscilloscope, and several digital multimeters and other stuff. Um, I've recently been revising that area and uh, one of the things I did was I got a new power supply uh, from Siglent to replace the old homemade one that was, I think I built it in the late 70s. And um, it, of course, had a different size than the old homemade one, which in turn I'd been using as a support for my analog scope. And basically the whole stack up failed to work properly. I tried several different arrangements of making wooden blocks and shims and so on and everything always ended up wobbly or I couldn't put the equipment in the stack the way I wanted something would always shift or you know it just wasn't optimal so I decided the way to do this right was to make a little miniature multi-level table to uh, support the most critical uh, sections of the stack in the proper orientation and uh, I also noticed that um, with my analog scope now sitting right on top of the two large power supplies that uh, they introduced a little bit of jitter into the waveforms on the scope whenever the power supplies were turned on. This was by magnetic coupling into the uh, CRT. Um, I hadn't had that before because the uh, homemade power supply uh, was probably about five or so inches tall and provided a just a distance barrier between the power supplies with their large transformers and the scope. The homemade supply had fairly small transformers and wasn't very powerful really. So I decided to make the mini bench uh, have a space above the power supplies but before the analog scope of approximately the same dimensions as the uh, old power supply took up to get a similar uh, distance attenuation of the magnetic field and its coupling to the CRT. So that's all part of the design and I had not planned to make a YouTube video of this project and decided to do so later so it's really going to be more of a slideshow with narration than um, an actual video. Another uh, design consideration for the mini table was that the stacked equipment goes at an angle to everything else, so the table needs to be shaped in such a way that it doesn't interfere with anything else, and yet it can still accommodate uh, equipment of different depths and widths, uh, and still have a kind of a cutout at the back left corner so it won't run into the wall back there. I resolved to make this mini table as a one day project and to buy nothing new to make it. So I had some plywood left over from other projects, many of which are covered here on YouTube, and uh, that included some uh, quarter inch plywood and some half inch plywood, both of them really metric sizes that are a bit less than those dimensions. Um, I figured I needed for stability and strength approximately a half inch thick uh, piece of plywood for each of the table levels and I didn't have enough left in the dimension required uh, to make both table layers so I decided to uh, laminate two pieces of the quarter inch together. I just put some wood glue in between them and roughly clamped them just by putting heavy bottles and bricks on top uh, and I also utilized my new um, pneumatically powered uh, brad nailer to secure them together uh, while they dry and to keep them in alignment. I then had two pieces of roughly half inch plywood. They actually were the same thickness, uh, both the laminated pair and the part that started out as roughly half inch. And I decided to face all the plywood edges with trim strips for a better appearance and I had some leftover uh, pine boards, just scraps really, and I used my table saw to rip very thin strips, um, I think they were along the lines of 3 16 of an inch thick, uh, and made up enough of those just barely out of the scrap I had to um, 
face all the edges of both plywood pieces. Here is uh, the laminated plywood piece with trim strips uh, attached to three of the edges. Um, I used just regular wood glue on there and then to help hold them in place rather than clamping them I just put in a few uh, brads um, or I'm sorry pins using my pneumatic pin nailer. This was a lot faster than clamping and for this purpose it worked out very well. The half inch plywood piece got the same treatment and uh, then I decided that I was going to trim the fourth side as well so um, I added the fourth trim strip to the fourth side of both the half inch shown here and the uh, laminated plywood pieces. I figured out the dimensions of the uh, half inch layer uh, which is the one that's going to uh, go in the middle and I cut out the corner so it won't hit the wall in that corner and then transferred the dimensions to the laminated piece and cut the same thing out there. The opposite corner of the uh, table uh, was going to impact my digital oscilloscope uh, which is not part of the stack but is adjacent and I realized I was going to have to take off just a little bit of that opposite corner uh, at a bevel so um, I would avoid having that uh, collision over there so I, I lopped off the uh, corners of both uh, the half inch and the laminated sections of plywood. And then attached uh, by glue and pinning a trim strip. There was just enough scrap of the trim strips left to uh, trim the edges of the two cutout corners uh, opposite the bevel corner. So um, I put those on. The two layers of the table are going to be supported on four legs, which um, I had some scraps laying around, and once again I had just barely enough out of a couple different pieces to make four legs, and they actually had slightly different widths, so the legs on one side were going to be slightly wider than those on the other side, or slightly thicker, I guess. Um, and I marked the lower level of the lower level table which is the one made from half inch plywood to have notches for the legs and then uh, since I was just going to pin through from the top I did not need the cutouts in the top layer or the top level of the table uh, which is made from the laminated plywood uh, but I still mark the positions of the notches so I could make sure to get the legs uh, aligned properly. I started mounting the legs by positioning them in the notches on the lower table and uh, putting in wood glue on all three contact points and then putting a single brad nail from my pneumatic brad nailer uh, in the center of each joint so that the legs could still uh, wobble a little bit um, so I could allow for best alignment and making sure they were square and everything. And uh, then I attached the top level table and once again uh, use the brad nailer down from the top into the legs and once that was done then I went back and put extra brads in the uh, the junctions at the uh, the junctions of the legs and the lower level table. Here's what the holes look like on the uh, brad holes for the lower level and here's what they look like when I went through the top of the top level into the tops of the legs. The holes are not like with the pin nails where you can hardly see them. These are obviously bigger and the brads have a bit of a head on them. They're driven slightly below the surface I think with the presumption that you might use some wood filler over them. I did not do that here and um, I had put a little bit too much oil in my uh, brad nailer so it was squirting a little bit of oil into the holes along with the with the brads and you can see the outline around each hole where the oil sort of discolored the wood. Being somewhat paranoid I suddenly had a uh, <laughs> a crisis of uh, wondering if I had properly measured and designed this thing and I recalled that I needed uh, 
a minimum of 17 and a quarter inches width between the legs to have both large power supplies down there. So I did a quick double check with my tape measure, and while I was at it, I re-verified that the depth of the left side was uh, 11 inches and the depth of the right side was 14 inches. One other feature I wanted this table to have would be a proper uh, holder for my roll of solder. In the past it always just sat on the tabletop and I would pull solder off of it and it would kind of crazily wobble and shatter but never actually quite fall off. I decided I wanted it to be on a proper dispenser which would require a dowel and um, I was out of any kind of dowel except some very thin stuff and so I just took a piece of uh, stairway railing that I'd uh, had for another project. It's not really pine. I don't know what it's made out of. It's not a real good hardwood, but it's sort of a hardwood. And I figured it would be plenty uh, rigid when cut down to the size necessary to go through the core of my solder spool. So I cut off a piece and I chucked it up in my wood lathe, which is covered under another YouTube video, and um, turned it down kind of rough and ready, sanded it, and uh, checked the dimensions a few times with my caliper, of course, in the process. And uh, then I ended up with this uh, piece that was the right dimension except for the left side, which was where it was uh, attached to the lathe. And then I cut off that section and squared off the ends, leaving the proper desired length. To mount the dowel to the leg of the uh, table, I wanted to use a bracket so I could remove it and reposition it if desired at a later point. Um, so I uh, got a piece of scrap half-inch plywood and used a Forstner bit to drill out the center to the diameter of the dowel, a couple of more screw holes with uh, countersunk heads for mounting this block to the table leg, and then I also got some of the scrap quarter-inch plywood and marked a circle on it to make a sort of a large washer to go on the end of the dowel rod and um, then cut that out. To attach the wooden washer to the end of the dowel rod, I had a uh, brass insert that would accommodate an 832 bolt and along the, with the bolt and a small metal washer. Um, and to put that brass insert in, I chucked up the freshly made wooden dowel in my metal lathe and drilled out the required um, hole in the end of the dowel and um, then epoxied the uh, brass fitting into that hole. I used epoxy to uh, mount the dowel into the bracket <clears throat> that I'd made in the previous step. And uh, you can see I had it shimmed here, or blocked rather, with a tape measure and another block of wood just to hold it straight while the epoxy was curing. And here is the completed bracket. A couple of pilot holes in the left front table leg, and the bracket went on pretty nicely. And the 832 bolt with its washer went through the wooden washer into the end of the dowel. And you can see here the completed holder for the solder roll. I applied a uh, liberal coat of varnish, just a single coat, to all surfaces and gave it a really light sanding just to take off the uh, little rough edges that you always get after a first coat of varnish. Um, and then I applied some felt pads that I had laying around to the bottoms of the legs. I uh, positioned the mini table over the two power supplies and then stacked the uh, other equipment on top and the space that allows me to have less magnetic coupling between power supplies and scope is a good storage area for all my little IC testers and transistor testers and other bits and pieces of things that used to just get piled on the side. <laughs> 